Hello, good morning everybody. So, is a introductory class basically uh, where we can see that how we can go for this particular course which is biological inorganic chemistry. So, is a basically a hybrid one where we should have some good information or the knowledge and the understanding about the typical inorganic chemistry and as well as the coordination chemistry and also the some component which we all know as the biochemistry, but it is not biochemistry, it is typically the biological chemistry. So, what we will be seeing there because of these things, the areas the, for the entire course basically we will be focusing our attention on the metal ions and the metal ion binders. So, what are those? We know that we have the typical example of iron in our blood system. Similarly, for bacteria also they can take us uh, take up uh, the metal ions like iron like using the siderophore. So, not only the metal ion, but also the ligating parts which we are calling it as the binders. Then little bit we can see about the assimilation pathways that means how the metal ions are involved in this particular environment the biological environment where we can get these metal ions from many sources like the food material where we get like that and how it can be incorporated say in heme proteins like hemoglobin and myoglobin that means the iron insertion reaction that can be very nicely considered as the typical assimilation roadways or the pathways. Then we little bit will see about the biochemistry of transition metal ions because we all know the coordination chemistry typically the inorganic chemistry of the transition metal ions particularly the 3D metal ions. Then the different metal proteins and the metal enzymes will have the focus on it. Then inorganic non-metallic species. So, inorganic non-metallic species if we consider that the simple inorganic component of any species from the periodic table such as the iodine. So, the iodized molecules the why we take the iodized salts also. Similarly, other inorganic components like phosphate, arsenates and all these things how phosphates can be utilized for your metabolic pathways and finally, we will consider very briefly the involvement of the metal ions in medicine like platinum 2 plus in cisplatin. We all know this is the anti cancer drug which is readily available in the market nowadays and which is also in use for the last 50 years or so. So, we will focus our attention on typical MIs, we will basically most of the time we will abbreviate basically the metal ions as the MIs in biological systems, which is a very growing interest, great interest to the coordination chemists, particularly the synthetic chemists, where people can make the molecules in the laboratories. So, the different chemical properties of these metal ions, which can define the functions of the proteins, enzymes and the systems. Then we will talk about the movement of the electrons that means the electron transfer pathways which is very important pathways starting from photosynthetic organisms where we can have the water oxidation center WOC or the water splitting center. We all know the photosynthetic pathways, but it is also related to something which we call as the photosystem 2 or PS2 where we see that the oxygen evolution can take place. So, during that particular process of oxygen evolution in photosystem 2, whether any metal ion is present or not that is the manganese. So, the manganese typically in higher oxidation states are involved for the oxidation of O2 which is coming out from our water molecules that is why it is called water oxidation center. Then the electron transfer behavior also we find in the respiratory chains of mitochondria which is obviously always coupled with the proton pumping or the proton transfer because we know the electron transfer can take place in one direction and the proton transfer in the opposite direction and which is also involved in ATP synthesis adenosine triphosphate synthesis. We all know that when we breathe that the same oxygen enters in our bloodstream. So, the reactivity of that particular oxygen as a ligand molecule now oxygen itself can be the ligand which can interact with the iron in hemoglobin because it will be carried to the tissues where we can store it via myoglobin giving you myoglobin O2 that means MbO2 that means the oxygenated form or the oxygenated version of the myoglobin until we require that for the burning of the food material in metabolic processes. So, typically the structure activity relation will be focusing our attention 
mostly on this particular system where it is basically the mononuclear part and this mononuclear part is nothing but what we can have the corresponding porphyrin ring and the iron is inserted over there. So, the heme protein then oxygen is bound and stabilized. So, this particular assembly how the environment not only the metal ion environment when it is bound to give you the corresponding coordinate bonds to uh, the iron center 6 coordinate bonds are forming, but also some other complex mechanisms can be there such as one very simple thing that hepcidine which is a peptide hormone is a very recent information and the recently discovered hormone. So, is a hormone peptide based and it produced in our liver and responsible for regulating iron levels in the body. So, it is not only you are anemic if your iron assimilation pathways is bad is not only your anemic thing that means your anemic your iron concentration is less in your body your porphyrin concentration is also less in your but what is controlling the molecule or the hormone which is controlling the regulation of iron level is the hepticin. So, we have to know little bit about that particular hormone also. So, these are the most complex pathways what we will try to find out that how clearly we can understand from the point of view of the reactivity of the metal ions. Okay. Thank you.